The door swung open. Terracon crutched his stumble into the room on its iron handle. His intrusion startled. The two soldiers who had escorted Cassandra back to the castle were kneeling before Her Majesty. He had hoped to beat them back. It would have allowed him to cover the whole messy ordeal with a few innocent lies. There was no escape now, however. The train of Osmar's gown hissed as she turned a venomous glare at the captain. The burden of her undivided attention crippled Terracon with apprehension. Without request or command, the two soldiers excused themselves and scuttled out of the room. The door closed, the lock dropped, and Terracon was penned in with the queen. What possible excuse could you have for your behavior, Captain? She attacked. Her use of his title instead of his name disconcerted him so that he could only stammer and mumble his attempt to explain. She would not abide his excuses, however. She stalked right up and bore into him with her lilac stare. Although shorter, she seemed to tower over him. Her ascendant posture convinced him of his insignificance. He wanted to be safely folded up and tucked away into oblivion. Her wrath, however, was inescapable. How is it that she can cause this sort of temperament in you? Osmara blasted. She was a stubborn, awful birth, and a complicated, disruptive child. I know how much of a pixie she can be. We have, however, all learned to deal with it. The entire court manages to go about their daily monotony, unaltered by her antics. By the demon's desert, you have been here since the very beginning, have watched her every move for nearly twenty years, and yet fail to maintain your composure? She huffed her frustration to cap her exhausted rant. I am disgusted with your irresponsibility. Your Majesty, please hear me out. His plea fueled her burning outrage. Hear you out, she scoffed. You expose the sole heir of the House of Hexen to innumerable dangers. Every minute that she escapes your watch is a moment in which the kingdom can crumble. Knowing this, how dare you beg me to entertain your excuses? She threw out her aging, wrinkled hands and shoved Terracon down into an overstuffed leather armchair. With an accusatory finger jabbed at his breast and a rasp on the brink of berserk, Osmara scolded, As queen, I am not permitted the luxury of reconsideration. Yet your promotion is my foremost regret right now. I have mind to suspend you for your audacity. Too furious to go on, Osmara whisked herself off to a seat in the bay window. The moonlight that poured through the glass cast her in silhouette. Terracon could bear her stare no longer. He sank into the creaking leather chair and brought his hand to his brow to hide his face. He could feel her presence through the distance, listened as her heavy breathing eased back into calm. Your company is never to retreat from the princess, she muttered in a more controlled tone. As long as they are in her service, they are expendable, and as much as I hate to say it, so are you. None of us can afford to put our own emotional investment in the way of the kingdom. Terracon dared to peek between his fingers when she sighed with a curious, exhausted tone. You are excused, Captain, she closed, almost apologetically. He stood. Your Majesty, he said, bowed, and retreated from the room. The heavy wooden door closed. Terracon leaned back against it and wallowed in his embarrassment. He closed his eyes ready to fall asleep in his armor right there on the cold stone floor. It was not that he was tired, but simply that he needed the fresh start of a new day. I'm sorry that I got you in so much trouble, Cassandra offered as she peeked around a corner. Did he really have to answer her? He had just been commanded to never retreat. It is nothing serious, a gesture necessary because someone has to be blamed, he dismissed, but convinced neither himself nor the princess. His dread was tactile and contagious. She sympathized, wanted to help, but knew he would refuse her. Without his forgiveness, she was paralyzed, incapable and inept. She kept her head bowed while waiting for any word from him. Terracon wanted only to hear the drop of his lock as it shut out the world, wanted to sink into his pillow and be drowned to sleep by its numbing comfort. He pushed himself off the floor with a sigh and started down the corridor toward his room without so much as a glance to the princess. Cassandra was chilled by his apathy and hugged herself to keep warm. Despondent, confused, and tethered by guilt, she could do nothing but follow and hope that he would forgive her. The rapping of her pursuing heels pounded like a hammer in Terracon's head. Her sweet perfume congested. He could smell her next to him almost as easily as he could touch her. He had walked away to put space between them. 
Her stalking kept her too close. That she could not understand that he needed distance offended him. Violently, Terracon turned on her. He punched the wall to block her path, startled her attentive, and, with the same accusatory finger Osmara had pointed at him, directed his impatience at her. What was that? he snapped. How would you explain that fiasco? Maybe if I hear what you have to say, then I could find some solace in Her Majesty not listening to me. His sarcasm splintered Cassandra's pity, and instantaneously she was transformed. Her eyes pinched, her brow arched, regret swelled into anger. She pushed Terracon back with both hands, parried his accusation with her own jabbing finger, and pinned him susceptible against the wall. I said I was sorry. She flicked at his chin, flicked the topic away. Besides, what has happened is in the past. We cannot change it now. It would be better simply dealt with rather than argued over, she offered consolingly. Good night, she tested the rift between them. Terracon noticed her sincerity. Perhaps beneath the silk dress and gold jewelry was a soul that could care. Perhaps he could try to forgive. Good night, he said. What happened? Melanie asked. When? Cassandra spoke around a piece of hard candy while perched on a stable door. Oh, no. You may not play this game with me. Cassandra's brow furrowed with inquiry at Melanie's suggestion. Melanie furrowed her brow right back. What did you hear? And I'll straighten out the facts. Cassandra hopped down and stood even with Melanie. I bet that's not all you've straightened out today, Melanie quipped. A slap of mock defense clapped against Melanie's shoulder, and the girls descended through giggles into gossip. Well, Karsak heard from Abigail, who heard from one of hers that the captain was ravaging your naked, sand-crusted body. Lies, all lies, Cassandra said sternly. I took him to the pond, showed him the cavern, and it all ended in a silly kiss. She looked away, almost ashamed. Just a kiss, and that was all. To the pond? Cavern? Melanie winked. Look, you little fairy, nothing happened. Well, did you like it? Like what? Cassandra grumbled. The kiss. Cassandra thought back to how his soft lips touched hers, how she could taste the cinnamon that he had clearly eaten earlier that day. The echo of that caress tempered her confidence. It was a rightful kiss, she declared with finality. Melanie could only guess. Sleeping was supposed to be easier than this. It was supposed to make the whole day melt away. Every time Terracon closed his eyes, however, all he could see was Osmara glaring at him. His every thought was riddled with ridicule. He felt dirty enough to contaminate everything he touched, and had already thrown all of the pillows and blankets to the floor. He laid back flat and stared at the rafters, counted them over and over again in an attempt to distract himself from his shame. As the moon drifted into the window's view, the panes cast a tenebrous net over Terracon's bare body. The captain was reminded of Daryl's quip, that he had been caught, a flopping fish out of water. How had it come to this? From his father, he had learned the back-and-forth choreography of combat, the feints, parries, and reposts. He had not defended his escape. He had not planned on needing one. How could he have let her pen him? From court came experience with innuendo and bureaucratic banter. He lacked intelligence about her motive and miscalculated her goading and baiting. He never thought of her as innocent, but he had never thought of her. Her ambitions were changing, but he did not know what they were becoming. He felt afraid that he did not know his enemy, but backtracked because she was not an enemy. She was his liege. Animosity and obedience were snarling his want to act. He was paralyzed by indecision and so had been moved by her schemes. He had always been destined to be her pawn. But this was the first time he felt it. Terracon rolled away from the chilling realization, curled up and fell to sleep in the warmth of a newfound resolve. He would commit to every action, whether or not wise, because she should not be able to choose for him, and she could not choose for him if he chose first. The cobblestone courtyard outside Castle Osmara was flooded with people. They binged on goods brought in from the world over. Merchants from as far off as Ioplia had arrived to peddle fine pottery, ethnically distinctive clothes, rare furs, and Judician love triangles, branding stamps from a sadistic practice rendered romantic by mythology. 
Fog from the southern Twin Lakes snuggled the city in a cold, wet blanket. Despite the forecast that the stormy weather brewing high above should not have been a bother until later that evening. The libations poured from the enormous painted kegs kept the people warm as they stood in the mist. They cheered on the clowns, dancing naked and painted like fire, and bet on the wyvern pairs, tethered at the ankles and sparring to escape. Terracon rode above the sea of cloaked and capped bodies and watched as his company patrolled the courtyard for the next inevitable trouble to break out. Two arrests had already been made, and the festival was not even into its second hour. A gentle tap on Terracon's shoulder introduced a voice that asked, Hey, how was she? Damn it, Karsak! Terracon snapped. Get away from me! Karsak reared back from Terracon's flailing hand with a laugh, then trotted off to rejoin his snickering company. Terracon sighed and pressed his fingers against his bloodshot eyes. The cold had tapped the little energy he had, and every exhausted limb hung limp from his body. His mind was as clouded as the city's streets. He wrestled to keep himself from dozing off, and begged that nothing else demanding happen that day. Cassandra, talk to me, Osamara pleaded with wrinkled hands open to her daughter. Cassandra circled from the armoire to the corner of her vanity. She pulled her hair to one side and began unraveling the braid. About what? Cassandra groaned, annoyed by her mother's mere presence. Terracon! Well, not just him, but all of yesterday. By black magic, where did you go? Osmara pressed. Her patience had been worn dangerously thin, and her mannerisms did nothing to conceal her frustration. I went away, then I came back. Cassandra ruffled her hair loose, then pulled the soft bristles of her golden brush through her tangled locks. Oh, and never any clue as to where you disappeared. You may think that life is simply something worth living, Cassandra, but you do not have the human luxury of squandering it. Cassandra traced a comb through her hair and brushed it to one side while totally ignoring her mother's monologue. I am disgusted by your obsession with gratifying your mood swings, and your willingness to jeopardize everything that you mean to this kingdom. But what is she if not her mood swings? Markiner chimed from the open door. Exactly, Cassandra concurred with a sarcastic snarl. Too busy pleading, Osmara missed her daughter's remark. Oh, Merkiner, darling, I am trying to discuss something with your sister. Whatever this is, it can wait. Very well, mother. I was under the impression that punishing Cassandra for dallying with her bodyguard was tremendously less important than dealing with issues of state, but I will be sure to reevaluate the priorities of Sovereign. Cassandra turned on the vanity stool to viciously glare at Merkiner. She thrust the last pin into her honey-hued hair, stood up, and fiercely demanded, Punish me for what? Trying to maintain my sanity? For making an effort to understand the world around me? Or would you prefer to see me punished for not selling myself to the throne? Merkiner smirked, adding oil to the fire. But it was his quip missed this time. Osmara was aghast. I will not be insulted for maintaining this house. You and Terracon have been acquainted for many years, but it has never threatened my rule. Your behavior has now complicated my authority over him, and I will not tolerate the disrespect, whether it be from human rebels, hex and deserters, or because of personal affections. Cassandra sat back down and stole remorseful glances of her mother through the mirror. Osmara did not notice and continued in a bitterly harsh tone. Now I want to know what happened, and what is the nature of your relationship with Captain Terracon? I practically forced him to get in the water, Cassandra confessed. He did exactly what he should have done. Then we just played like we did when I was little. I grew up with Terracon, she asserted in a confident tone, and I love him like a brother, the way that I love Draco or Merkiner. Poor sap, Merkiner scoffed. That is not a girl I would court. A surge of rage welled up in Cassandra, and she bit back, not that a girl would court an antique piece of parchment like you anyway. Is that the way you love Terracon? Merkiner laughed. Oh, mother, you could reprimand her by keeping the two of them together. Shove it. Cassandra hollered with a glare so fierce that the door's hinges seized with apprehension and violently slammed shut. Merkiner's reflexes were fast, however, and he punched the door open before he was shut out. Enough, both of you, Osmara roared. Merkiner, back to court. Cassandra, I will deal with this matter later. In the meantime, see to it that you are prepared for de tutal. You have but a few hours, and I expect perfection. The velvet cushion rolled across the marble tiles as the vanity stool crashed to the floor. Cassandra was up. She threw out her arms and shoved her mother. Out! She screamed, her eyes clenched tight. Osmara was aghast at Cassandra's hurting her out of the bedroom. With one strong push, Cassandra threw Osmara into Merkiner. With another, she threw them both from the jam, then slammed the heavy door shut. You have two hours! Osmara shouted from the other side. 